What's going on YouTube? We are back out here in our nursery. It's been a couple weeks since we planted them and we've made a lot of significant progress out here as far as growth and getting things really prepared for the long run of uh, keeping these trees growing. So one of the very first things we did was start to get our electric fence up. We got posts about 40 feet apart, three separate wires to it. And that's just in order to keep the deer out because they will come in here and eat every little bit of new growth that grows on these trees. And so when I'm talking about new growth, you could see here that the shoots have come out where the buds were. Here's a better example. That's all new growth here in the last like five days. And that's what we have to keep protected because this will eventually grow into the trunk and that's what we'll use in the future. The other two major things that we've done so far is that we've weeded down in between the rows with hoeing in order to keep weeds away from these trees and we do that because we would like to keep competition from taking the nutrients and the water from the soil while we're trying to grow these trees they need all of the help they can get and secondly we've added in a component of rototilling and so now we're rototilling these rows also to keep grass and weeds down so amongst some of the things that we've done we started out by stripping all of the buds down the trunk here of the rootstock in order to make sure that the tr that the plant focuses on pushing out on these buds that we're trying to grow upward in order to create create our tree we had a question pop up in the last video and what's the advantage of grafting over onto a different rootstock there's really two things to consider is the your soil type and what type of tree you're trying to grow for us we've always used a dwarfing rootstock type for our high density apples because we're trying to put a lot of trees into a small space but our new ones the m106 is in the in all the nursery videos that you've seen including this one We've used an M106, which is more of a semi-standard type that won't require fencing and high-density trellis work in order to keep it or keep the tree standing up. They'll be able to support themselves with their with the bigger root system. <laughs> that does not sound good. everyone's least favorite part at least it's my least favorite part I heard her click. Yep. She's in there. And where is the... So we got the rototiller hooked up to the new holler and we'll uh, go start doing some rototilling in the nursery. Is it is it ever really full if you don't try and get the last drops in there without overflowing her a little bit. Alright. Wow, that was a pain in the butt to get that first one off. Sheesh, I'm gonna have to talk to somebody about that. Alright. Got the electric fence down here, and we're gonna jump in these rows and start to rototill and see if uh, we can avoid hitting anything. Got to avoid the trees and our blue irrigation line that runs across the orchard in every row.
So I just started ro rototilling out here. And you know, when stuff stops spinning, you got a, a big old rock wedged in there. That's not a good, uh, not a good start for us. I also wanted to thank everybody again for all of the overwhelmingly great support that I've had. I've received a lot of messages, a lot of great comments, and if you're still watching at this point here in the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy what you're seeing here on these videos. Next week, I think I'm gonna do a little bit more of some orchard maintenance stuff, maybe some weed control underneath the trees, maybe show a couple of our orchard mowers and how we maintain our grass and whatever else pops up.